Hi, welcome back. I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lomkins, and this is Freedom in Christ in the Kingdom of Heaven series ministry. This is shout out to the Rooftops Ministry, and welcome back. I am glad you decided to join me again. I am appreciative that you want to sit and listen. I recommend go get a friend and listen with you if you want or send this video to a friend and you both can enjoy it together. Send as many people as you want. Send the video to as many people, friends and neighbors and enemies. Just send it that this word will get out to their hearts. Welcome back. We're going to pick up where we left off. Remember, we're talking about the coming kingdom, the coming judgment that's going to become on earth and in believers or for believers. We got to have our act together. The Lord is coming back with his reward. I want you to get a reward. I want you to be ministers of the Lord and his love and his grace in these times. Not fighting anybody, not fighting over territory or sidewalk. I want you to know that your reward is in heaven when he comes back. We talked about his glorified body that we're going to get. We're talking about his reward with him for the life that we lived, obeyed him, and treated the people of God with love and respect. Why don't we pray, and then we'll get started where we left off. Welcome back, and let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, Father, send your word right now into our hearts. Plant it deep within our hearts, God, that we hear it and we understand it and we obey. God, I pray for every listener and their friends and their family. Meet every need, God, but mostly the need that we receive Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Dwell with us, Holy Spirit. Minister to us. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Thank you for coming back. I'm excited. I hope you are. I have some anticipation of sharing some new scriptures with you. And then if I repeat myself, don't worry about it. How many commercials have you seen that keep repeating yourself? How many times have you watched reruns? Well, don't worry about it. If you hear me say, she said that before, or I heard her say that already, guess what? I'm going to keep on repeating it and repeating it and hope to God that it's planted deep in your heart. Okay? So, why don't we open with, how shall we escape a great of salvation? What do we need to do to receive this Jesus and what he wants us to do? Receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's a simple prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I confess that I'm a sinner. And Lord, I believe that you are Lord and Savior of my life. It's confession with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's that simple. And then being filled with the Holy Spirit, asking him, Lord, come into my heart, Lord. Abide with me, and he will abide with you. It's that simple. What do we do? How do we live this out? We ask him to come into our life. How shall we escape so great a salvation? Hebrews 2, 3 to 4. Hebrews 2, 3 to 4. How shall we escape? Let me see. So what makes us think we can't escape? If we ignore this great salvation, you can share this with your friends if you want to. That was first announced by the Lord Jesus himself and then delivered to those who heard him speak. And God continued the message by giving signs and wonders and what various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose. So, how shall we escape? God has a plan. He implemented Jesus to fulfill that plan. And we think we're going to go in another direction and try to find another route. The Bible says you're a thief and a robber unto yourself if you try to come up another way. He only comes through the door. Jesus says, I am the door. I am the bread of life, he says. I am the door. My sheep come in and out and they find pasture. There's not another road in life that you can travel that's going to bring you into the kingdom of heaven but by the door of Jesus, okay? I hope I said that plain. I hope that means something to you because that's what I'm going to keep repeating again and again until you understand. There's no other name under heaven and earth whereby we must be saved, okay? Isaiah 55 verse 69 
This is the Old Testament. If you have New Testament Bibles, you won't have Isaiah. But if you have a regular Bible, Isaiah is in about the middle of the Bible. It's the Old Testament, but it definitely speaks to us today. I'm going to go really slow and read it for you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. There you go. There you go. That's as plain as the Bible could possibly get. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Remember we read that the poor you will always have with you, but my spirit will not always dwell with men. Seek the Lord right there. It says seek the Lord while he may be found. That agrees with the scripture that we said. My spirit may not, I'm not always going to dwell with man here like this. His patience is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. But then he's going to come with judgment. Okay. God's rule is coming on earth. And he's asking his people to now to seek him before he does come. Okay. That was very good. Very, very, very good. The next one. Remove your lampstands. Revelations 2.15. How this is lived out. Revelations 2.15. He says, he says, this is believers. This is those who name the name of the Lord. This is for the church. Whether you have four walls or you watch on Zoom. You're a believer. You name the name of the Lord. You've been baptized by him. You received his grace and mercy. You live in this life this long. He is talking to you and to me. And he says, but I have this one complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Anyone who has ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give the fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of God. There you go. There you go. Cause and effect. Turn back. Repent. Get your blessing. If not, he's going to remove your blessing. If not, there's nothing you can look forward to in the kingdom of heaven. He says, if you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. He's wanting the churches. He's wanting believers that you and me. A lot of times we do go astray. I have. I did a long time ago. I thought I could handle the world. I thought I could go into the world and do what I wanted to do. I partied it up. I enjoyed it. I felt good about it. But then... So many things started to happen. I had no idea it was God calling me back. I think the devil just whipped me right on back to God. I think he turned me every which way but loose. But after that pressure, I said to the Lord, I'm coming back to you. And I did. And from that point, I did not go away from God anymore. So if you're like that, if you happen to feel like that, you're far away, you've been gone too long, he said, repent. Just come on back. Step up. Come back to the Lord. Because the coming times, the pressure is going to be on. The information is going to be in the world that's going to try to tell you, don't go back. Don't go back to Jesus. You tried that already, and look, it didn't work. They're going to try to suggest to you that you try something else. Seeing that Jesus thing was too hard, maybe you should try somebody else. But that's a lie. That is a lie. That is a lie. You're not trying anybody else. You're confessing your sins and you're becoming back to Christ. Okay? Confess your sins, he says. Turn around and repent and come back to the Lord. He tells us. Here we go. Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many and you will hear a wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, 
These things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world, but all this is only the first of birth pains to come. Okay, many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow cold. But to the one who endures, listen to you, listen, the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the, God, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the world, and all the nations will hear it, then the end will come. Okay, beloved, you got a job to do. You got to preach that good news. You got to preach Christ and him crucified. Then the end will come. It's going to be hard. It's going to be um, um, one of the most difficult times the earth have ever experienced. But he said, if you hold on, hold on, hold on to the end, you will be saved. Remember, we talked in the last video about getting our glorified bodies in the twinkle of an eye. We could also be changed. Hold on, you're waiting for that twinkle of your of an eye to come. And that, that last trumpet, you will hear and you will know he's coming. And he's coming to bring his reward to us. I'm hoping you are holding on. It's going to be hard. It's going to be days of anguish. And it's going to be like as the earth has never gone through before. Okay, hold on. Not with, with unchanging hands and wait because the coming Christ is coming back again, okay? Second Peter 3, 3 to 13. Second Peter 3 to 13. Second Peter, there we go. Timothy, okay, here's Peter back here. Second Peter. Here we go, okay, I'm gonna take my time for my new listeners. I'm gonna take my time for those who don't know familiar with the Bible says, I'm gonna read it to you, okay? This is Second Peter 3, the verse three to 13. I'm gonna start at verse three. Most importantly, the Bible says, I want to remind you in the last days, coming judgment, there will be scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was created. Yeah, there's been wars. There's World War I, World War II. There's skirmishes between countries. There's been fightings. There's been earthquakes. There's been plagues. There's all come. Where is this Jesus? They're saying, I thought you said he was coming back. Somebody said there was a date that they picked and he didn't come back. Scoffers. They're just pointing, messing with your head, saying, where's your salvation? They said that to Jesus, too, while he was on the cross. They said, he's the son of man. He should come down and show us that he's the son of man. Oh yes, those mockers and scoffers are out there. He says, they deliberately forget that God made the heavens by his word of his command. And he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and the earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief, the Bible goes on and says. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in the fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives we should live. Looking forward to the day of God's coming. Hurry it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt with flames. But we are looking forward to a new heaven. Remember, new wine, new wineskins, new body, new heaven and earth. There you go. 
The old will be passed, and the God's world will be filled with his righteousness. The love, the joy, the peace, the promise of God will be here. No more wars, no more sickness, no more plagues, no more pain, no more suffering, no more fightings. The Bible says, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Oh my goodness, is that for judgment? Is that the coming judgment? Yes. Is that what the world can expect? Yes. If that's what the word, the word of God promises us, yes. His patience gives people time to be saved. Did you understand? His patience, his patience, his grace is giving people time to be saved. This is us, church. This is us. This is the moment I've been waiting to share with you. You are the ones who are going to bring the word of God to unbelievers, to your brothers, fathers, sisters, mother, co-workers, whoever they are. God is being patient with you who need to be bringing this good news to others. He's patient. Things is happening as bad as they can be. People are hating each other hurting each other, shooting, stabbing, killing each other. But God is patient because he would not anyone be lost. He would that everyone would come to paradise. He's being patient with you, church. He's being patient with me and with you and with those that name the name of the Lord, those that call upon his name, those that call believers, those that have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. He wants us to be about the harvest. Remember the scriptures. The harvest is now. The laborers are few. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers into his harvest. This is the harvest time. This is the coming judgment. You need to understand that you are either part of the harvest or you're part of the judgment. What will you be? Will you have food for him? Fresh, 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 fresh. Fresh fruit, delicious fruit, delicious, delicious, tasty people who have tasted the Lord and see that he is good. People's lives that have turned around because of something that you said and they came into the kingdom. Okay, that's what we're talking about. You were ministering. You were helping the poor. You fed people. You shared the good news. You might have gave them some clothes from your own house. I don't know what you've done, but do you have good fruit? for the Lord when he returns, okay? He's being patient. He wants people to be saved. He's being patient with you. He wants us out there to share the good news of the coming Christ, or in this case, the coming judgment for those who don't receive what you said, okay? It's coming judgment for those who have rejected the gospel of Christ. All right, I could stay on that verse a whole lot longer, but I'm going to move along, and I'm going to move along slowly. Okay, we walking in the light. Number 14, we walking in the light. Here we go. He says, this is the message we heard from Jesus. And now declare to you, God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing his word has no place in our hearts. Oh, church, you don't want to make, you don't want to call God a liar. Step up, confess, believers, I know we make mistakes. I know we trouble in our soul over stuff that we do or did. God knows what we did. God knew you were going to do it before you did it. Don't try to hide it. Don't try to make it think that it's no big deal. If you offend, if you're not loving, if you're not kind, if you're not showing mercy, if you're not representing Jesus, say, Lord, I lay on my bed, God, and I blew that today, and I'm sorry. I'm trying to get it right, and I keep on messing up. 
Let him know you need more grace. Let him know you need more of his mercy. And he will give you whatever you ask. If you need more patience, Lord, if you need more, more compassion, if you need more of his Holy Spirit in you, if you need to set some time away and start to talk with God more, then do that, beloved. Do that. Get some more time with the Lord so that you can grow in his mercy and in his grace, okay? Walk in the light as he is in the light, and you'll have fellowship with one another. If you're not walking in the light, if you don't have fellowship, then you need to come to him in your prayers and ask him, Lord, I need more fellowship with these people. I need more mercy. I need more understanding. I need more patience. And he will give you what you need. All right. Isaiah, Old Testament again, chapter 2, verse 4. And he shall judge many of the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning forks. Okay. Nation shall not lift up their sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. There you go. When that kingdom comes, when that new heaven and earth comes, we can say, thank you, God, thank you, God. The wars are done. The fighting, the bickerness, the anger, the shooting, the killing, the murdering, the, the stealing and the corruption in high places, that's going to end when his kingdom of heaven comes. Beloved, church, believers, this is a message for you. You have the beginning, come to Christ. You have the middle, do the work. You have the end, reward is coming. If you linger and you hang out in the world more, there's sudden destruction. You don't know when he will require your soul. When you know that you should do the right thing, do it. And when you don't, confess your sins and ask him to forgive you. I am Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins. This is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry. Come on back. We got more. I want you to think about this a little bit more. Study these scriptures. I said them very plain for you. You might have another interpretation, but it don't matter because God is speaking to your heart. Search out the word and see what he wants you to know. I love you. Come on back. There's plenty more. This is shouted out to the Rooftops Ministry. We're studying the kingdom of heaven. We're studying the coming judgment on the church, on believers, on beloved. I hope you have some fruit and you want to know more what God is saying. Come on back. I look forward to you. Thank you. Bye now.